me paint a little scenario. You wanna have a nice little night out, go get some sushi, 10 to $15 per roll, and now you've spent $70. You can have that same night, but for this price right here. And that is but cheaper. cost of most sushi rolls can range anywhere from 10 upwards of 20 maybe even $30 if you're getting a really fancy one. At the end of the day, what you're paying for is a product that most people think they can't make. And that's just not true. You just need a little bit of technique, you need a little bit of care, and you can make it yourself at home, honestly, quite easily. Just be patient. Okay, I'm gonna try and be as flexible as possible, but I will say that there is one non-negotiable that both myself and I believe that Uncle Roger would agree with. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Okay, for all the people who are new to sushi, please understand that rice is the most important component of your life. If you mess it up, both Papa and Uncle Roger will be at your doorstep waiting. Now look, I've already done a guide on how to prepare sushi rice. The link is in the description, but for a brief recap, you need two cups of sushi rice, always wash your rice, and we're gonna wash it twice. Add it to your rice cooker with equal parts water, and no, I'm not budging on this, I know it's but cheaper, please just use a rice cooker, all right? You're gonna make your seasoned rice vinegar, which is super easy to make. Then once the rice is cooked, you're gonna season it with your sushi zoo to taste. And that's your sushi rice. Like I said before, if you wanna know the full recipe on this, the link is in the description in my Tamaki video. So now we have our most important component, the rice, currently sitting at this price right here. Then just gather your rice up, place it back in your rice cooker on the keep warm setting. We've got three rolls for you. Classic spicy salmon tamaki, a vegetable tamaki, which I think might be vegetarian, I'm pretty sure. I don't ever trust myself to say that because I always forget that one ingredient. And a pork belly makimono to level things out. Let's start with the spicy salmon tamaki. First thing we need to make is our fried shallots. Sure, you can buy these, but it'd be a whole lot cooler if you made them. You'll need three shallots, then slice your shallots as thinly and evenly as possible. I really would recommend a mandolin in all seriousness. Put those in a medium pot with two cups of vegetable oil or just enough to cover. Place that on a stove set to medium high, then begin constantly stirring. The oil will slowly start to come up to a light bubble, then start frying violently, and as soon as they turn golden brown, immediately fish them out of the oil using a spider and drain them on paper towels. These burn really easily, so just try not to get uh, distracted. Season them with salt while they're still hot. Now let those cool completely. Next, you'll need half of an English cucumber, but in order to get the length right, cut a sheet of nori in half and cut the cucumber to the same width as the nori. Take that cuke and cut the cheeks off of it like this leaving the core behind. Then take those cheeks, cut them into batons. Yes, haha, ha, Josh said cheeks, very funny. Now for the salmon, you're gonna need half a pound of sashimi grade salmon, which surprisingly was only like eight bucks. But you can switch this out for any sashimi grade fish you want or a cooked meat, technically, if you wanted to. Cut your fish using a very sharp knife, using single strokes only into nice half inch cubes. Then in a separate bowl, you're gonna combine a third a cup of mayonnaise, three tablespoons of sriracha, one green onion, thinly sliced, salt to taste, and one clove of grated garlic. Mix that together, add in your salmon and toss to coat. Now to make your roll, get yourself a sheet of nori, cut it in half so you have two halves, and repeat that so you have about eight to ten sheets. Take one of your half sheets, dampen your hands with water, and spread enough sushi rice along your nori to cover about three quarters of it. You want the top to have a little bit of exposed nori. Next, spoon on two to three tablespoons of your spicy salmon, a cucumber baton, topped with crispy shallots and some sesame seeds. Roll that up from the bottom, leaving a little tail of nori at the base, and you have a lovely salmon tamaki for this price to make eight of them, dude. That means each tamaki is going to cost this. That's a big flex. By the way, uh, these are hand rolls. You eat them as an individual serving. So just, you know, bite it like a burrito. Now you thought we weren't gonna put fish. You thought, well, you thought wrong, all right? You can't just, can't just, we're not gonna skip fish. It's not happening. Salmon, I think is gonna be the closest, most affordable raw fish you're gonna get. Tuna is medium tier. Tuna is medium tier and expense. So we went the lowest option with salmon. Spice. Immediately is already my favorite one so far. The salmon's fresh, it's spicy, it's creamy, salty, umami. What's the point of even going to a dang restaurant? Sometimes you just want to make it yourself for this much money. Brother, I've already made three of these now, and look how much is left, right? And this salmon only costs $8. Eight! You're trying to tell me you're not gonna save money eating cooking at home. Get the hell out of here. Next up, vegetable tamaki. You're gonna start with two large portobello mushrooms and cut the cap into three quarter inch slices. Turn the slices flat side down and cut off the black gills of the mushroom. Then using a sharp knife, score the flat side of the mushroom in a crosshatch pattern so it looks really cute and also so it cooks better. Do that again on the other side, then fill a medium skillet with enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat it over medium heat until it is ripping hot, then lay in your mushrooms, avoid overcrowding the pan. I like to use something to press it down. This is a chef press.
less. I love these things, use them all the time. And let it sear for about two to three minutes. Give them a little flip to look at one of the most beautiful mushroom sears I've ever seen. Season it to taste with salt and sear for another two minutes. Then remove from the pan and repeat with the rest. Now in a small bowl, combine a quarter cup of fresh mint leaves, a quarter cup of fresh cilantro leaves, and a quarter cup of fresh Thai basil leaves. Toss it together until you've got a fragrant, herbaceous forest of flavor. Now for assembly, get a half sheet of nori, spread out your rice, add on an eighth of an avocado, brush your avocado with soy sauce, add your seared mushroom, a nice cuke baton, thinly sliced green onion, and some of your herb salad. Oh, and last but not least, a nice handful of fried shallots. Then roll that absolute unit up nice and tight and marvel at its beauty but more specifically this amazing price for eight total tamaki meaning each tamaki will cost you this right here we got a tamaki hand roll we've done this before obviously but you know this is with the focus of it being affordable this is a vegetarian I think. I think it's vegetarian. And vegan, I think. I didn't really think it that much through. All I know is that it's mostly vegetables and there's no meat or animal products, I think, in here. Anyway. A lot of people are like, Josh, why don't you give the vegetarians attention? I'm doing it! Granted, it's in the exact same format as before, because, but it doesn't matter, okay? You can have this easy to make, beautifully curated flavor for this price right here. Okay, we saved the best for last a glazed pork belly maki roll. Before we start playing with our meat, get yourself two nice, large, thick, juicy, girthy carrots. Peel them, then julienne them as fine as possible. I actually used a julienne peeler. Sure, it's cheating, but it works really well, and it's fast. Link in the description for that. Place them in a jar so that they all fit nice and snug in there. In a medium saucepan, add two cups of vinegar, one cup of water, one tablespoon of salt, and two teaspoons of sugar. Set that over medium high heat, and as soon as it reaches a boil, immediately pour that over your carrots. Ensure that the carrots stay completely submerged and let them sit until they reach room temperature. Bang! Pickled carrots. Oh, and you can add a splash of shiradashi for some umami, and you know how papa feels about that. Next, you're gonna need two pounds of skinless pork belly. This one was much more than I needed for the record. Cut that in half so you get two even squares, then slice that into two inch thick pieces so they look like these. And then don't forget to take a pick for the gram. Optionally, you can score the fat cap of your pork in a cross hatch pattern to help the fat render out. Then heat the pan over medium high heat, spray it lightly with cooking oil. You don't need much in here. You just need it so it doesn't stick. Once that's screaming hot, season your pork generously with salt, lay them in the pan. Optionally, you can add any spices you like. I hit mine with some five spice and sear for about two to three minutes or until it reaches a beautiful golden brown. Then give them a flip. Once the other side is seared, tilt the pan and crisp the fat cap up in the corner where all the fat is pooling, just until it's nicely browned and looking like a snack. Now these are still raw in the center, so pop that in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes or until cooked through. Then optionally, when they're done, brush them with a little hoisin sauce. You only need around a half cup of that. Once each piece is evenly coated in hoisin, caramelize that glaze either under a broiler or if you're cool, use a kitchen torch until it looks nice and glossy and icky sticky. Now we're almost there. Get one bunch of green onions, cut off their root bottom and the green parts, so you're left with whites and just a touch of green. Then heat two tablespoons of vegetable oil over medium high heat until shimmering. Add your green onions and sear, tossing occasionally for about three to four minutes or until you get some nice char and caramelization. Season that to taste with salt and set to the side. All right, assembly time. This time get a full sheet of nori, place it on a sushi mat, add enough rice to evenly spread out to the edges, leaving one inch of space at the top. Make sure you don't spread the rice too thick. This was on the border of too much rice, so practice until it's how you like it. Now, Snag a piece of pork belly, cut it in half if it's really wide. Then slice those pieces in half lengthwise so you get two thinner pieces of belly. Place those on your rice at the bottom of the roll, leaving a little bit of space from the edge. Layer on a couple pieces of seared green onion, a generous handful of your pickled carrots, optionally but very highly recommended, some thinly sliced Thai chili, a handful of your herb salad from earlier, then roll it up halfway, give it a light crimp, and then roll it up the rest of the way until the edge is closed and give it one more good crimp, but don't, you know, strangulate the darn thing. Then take it out and look at that lovely log. To slice, get an extremely sharp long knife. Gently begin cutting until you reach about halfway down, then use the length of your knife and draw all the way back to slice the rest of the way through the roll. That way you get a nice clean cut. Then do that all the way down your roll and take a look at this beauty. So we have this beautiful fancy roll that comes in at a price of this for six to eight rolls. That means you're paying this for each roll. It's a pretty goddamn good deal if I ever seen one. Last but not least is a classic Makimono roll, sliced, of course. I decided to go the meat route. Sacrilege, I know. I did a lot of things that are sacrilegious today, but this looks damn good. You got the pork belly, it's glazed, it's roasted, it's fatty, pickled carrot, it's salty umami. I had a splash of shiradashi because I like it. Grilled green onion, you know, you can't go wrong with that. So without further ado, that was intrusive. I've never had something disappear into my mouth like that before. The meat is fatty and hot and sweet. The pickled carrots immediately cut the richness. It's chewy. I feel like this hits all the notes that I want in sushi roll. Great with fish too, but you know, there's nothing wrong with a nice fatty piece of glazed pork belly, or barbecue pork belly if you will, in a maki roll. And it looks pretty. Look, did you want to give it a kiss? 
If you want sushi and you don't want to spend a ton of money on it, you've come to the right place. You can have any of these rolls for this price, this price, or this price. It's up to you. It's up to you. You want to know what else is a thick log filled with various surprises and ready to be consumed? Beef. <laughs> So we made three different kinds of sushi rolls. Well, it's tamaki and one makimono, but you get the point. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to give you implications, ways that you can fill a sushi roll. But you can do it however you want, fill it whatever you want. You don't have to follow these recipes to a T, it's just a guide, it's just to get you started. If you just put vegetables in a sushi roll, like it's rice, nori, vegetables, cost you like a dollar, stop making excuses. Darn it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. And the sun's going away. Bye!